Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Gabriella. I make videos about astrology, fragrance, self-care, mental health, afterlife. I do vlogs and basically whatever else I feel like talking about. So welcome. Today I'm doing a pretty highly requested video that I actually made a couple years back and it's perfume for your zodiac sign. But back when I made this, I was partnering with Scentbird and so I used a lot of their scents and I haven't really picked out scents for zodiac signs from my collection. Sorry, I'm just adjusting. I'm serving you Flintstones vibes right now. If you're new to this channel, I actually have a ton of astrology videos. I make a lot of astrology videos. It's one of my biggest interests. So I think I'm pretty well equipped to be picking these out. Now I haven't planned them ahead of time because I think it'll be fun to just kind of chat and kind of figure out what sign, what perfume goes with each sign instead of just kind of going through it like a list. I think it's fun to be a little chatty, especially with perfumes. So let's start. Aries is number one. I have my whole collection here. Ooh, Aries, what are we gonna choose for you? Definitely nothing too feminine. Definitely something sporty almost. Oh, that's such a good one, oh my God. Hmm. Something with attitude though. Something definitely feisty, a little sexy. Sache Vanitas, that's possible. Okay, Narciso, this is one of my more masculine fragrances. Narciso, that's still not fiery enough for Aries. I want something cutting, but that still has sexiness. It's hard because some of the energies, I mean, if I were in Sephora, I'd be able to pick them out super fast. But I don't have, you know, my energies are more, I definitely have like a lot of earth sign fragrances. All right, I've settled. Uh, for Aries, I'm gonna choose Good Chemistry Brainiac. This is uh, a perfume that I actually picked up at Target. It's super affordable, but it's a really uh, clean, androgynous fragrance but it's still sexy. It's not sterile. Um, it's day and nighttime appropriate. It's fresh and uh, it's not gonna make you smell too high maintenance. It doesn't smell fancy. It's appropriate for many different occasions. So you can jet from here to there and kind of not have to switch up your perfume. And yeah, it's just the most, not sporty, cause I hesitate to use that word, you know? But like, I would think that the person who wears this is kind of a, a go-getter, uh, goes after what they want, maybe a jet setter, maybe they travel a lot, they're going here and there, they're a city, city person, busy and motivated. Good chemistry brainiac for Aries. Taurus, for me, this is really a no brainer. I mean, is it a brainer? <laughs> no, I think it's a no brainer. Hugo Boss, uh, this is Boss Hugo Boss The Scent Private Accord. Now this is a major gourmand. The notes are chocolate and mandarin and there's gotta be some vanilla and other things in there, but it's very, very tasty, delectable. Look how pretty this looks with this leopard. Um, and because Torians love food, they love sweets, they love indulgences. This is just so delectable, so indulgent, tasty. It's, it smells like, come lick me, you know? Oh, it's absolutely heavenly and very, very sensual. And so that's what I choose for Taurus. All right, for Gemini, air sign. Ah, I don't know why exactly, but this is uh, Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. And this reminds me a lot of uh, You by Glossier. So any sort of skin light fragrance, Geminis to me are not, um, they, they don't need to make a big announcement about themselves. I wouldn't choose a fragrance that's too overpowering or obnoxious. Um, and because they're social butterflies, for some reason I think you want a perfume that that people wouldn't find offensive and also airy, they're air signs, so they're light, they're not too heavy. I don't, you know, I wouldn't think of anything too syrupy or too sexy or putting off too strong of a message. Also that, because Geminis are sort of chameleons. They, like all humans, they're multifaceted, but they really, really show their different facets. They really are very versatile people and they have a really dynamic personality. And so you want a perfume that can play along with that, you know, that's not gonna be inappropriate for certain occasions. So this is called Not A Perfume. 
and it basically just smells like incredible incredible skin a whole maybe 24 hours after putting on a nice perfume but it has stayed a little bit that's what it smells like I, I I can tell by smelling this this is something especially that is very different on each person but it's playful too because it's it's not your normal perfume and it's quite light um, I sometimes just I describe perfumes by instruments I know that's crazy but I feel like I have that where my senses I don't know if that's what you call synesthesia but my senses kind of mix so this to me is like twinkly this is like a high pretty jaunty violin and I, I really like this and it's nice and light and airy just like Gemini cancer okay I'm pretty sure I'm sure what I want to use for cancer yes okay so this is a roller ball and this is called 1111 by Lake and Sky. I bought this at Credo in Chicago a couple years back. This is so aquatic to me. It smells like, oh my goodness. It's sort of beachy, but without the sunscreen or coconut note at all. And it just is like the breeze blowing through your hair. And, but beautiful and an ocean mist but it's also one of those skin scents. It's not going to project very far. Um, it's not going to be very obnoxious when you walk in a room, but I get so many compliments on this. It's, it just smells like you have ridiculous pheromones or something. It's so beautiful, but it's, it's like a cozy warm sweater. It's a cozy scent for sure. And I can just totally see this being the signature scent for a cancer. So the label has rubbed off, but it's 1111 by Lake and Sky. And uh, after this runs out, I definitely want to try the spray. I know they make an eau de parfum spray. Like a, like a 6 a.m. walk by the ocean in a very expensive cashmere sweater. I want to mention a runner-up for cancer. Ariana Grande Cloud. I mean, Ariana Grande is a cancer, first of all. This is a very cozy, cutesy little bottle, which is so cancer. And it just smells like a delicious, warm hug from someone really lovely. So it's marshmallow and it's... Oh, it's gourmand and warm and so cozy. Ugh, oh, this is amazing. So that's my runner up for cancer. Leo, my own personal sign. Uh, I tried to dress very stereotypical Leo. Oh, what are we gonna choose for Leo? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. This is Carnal Flower by Dominique Opion, uh, part of the Edition de Parfum Frederick Mall. So this is a white floral, but there's something about it. And I was reading up on it and an ingredient in here, which makes sense why it's called Carnal Flower. I think really the name is what captured me. Um, something that is an ingredient in here is the scent or the essence that a flower gives off when it's in date like it's trying to ward off danger I don't want to be wrong but it's something really interesting so yeah this is not a cheap for perfume so that's also very Leo like I bought this at Barney's New York it's so good it's a white flower uh, white floral and I knew for Leo I wanted to choose I mean we're summer babies but I knew that I wanted to choose something that smelled like sunshine but also opulence and sex appeal because that's I mean, I'm really giving myself all the compliments, but I only have my son in Leo, so really I'm not like the most Leo Leo, but oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh yes, it includes uh, salicylates or salicylates. It's a natural toxic product of herbal origin, a sort of herbal pheromone, which is used by plants as a warning. So there's a bit of coconut and musk, orange blossom, tuberose, ylang ylang, jasmine, uh, bergamot, melon, and eucalyptus in the top notes. Eucalyptus, wow. Okay, yeah, I guess I do, that's, that's amazing. I totally get that, but it's not um, herbal at all. It's, you know, pretty much white flower with a little bit of that sunshiny smell, which makes sense with the coconut. It's gorgeous, it's opulent, it's going to get you attention. It especially gets me attention from women, like they love the smell, it's, it's a goddess smell for sure. It's, uh, it projects quite a bit so you will be smelled by other people, it's an attention getter and that's what a Leo loves. So carnal flower, that's what I choose for Leo. Oh, another one for Leo is, I only have the small sample, but I, 
I feel like my most Leo self when I wear this. This is Instant Crush by Mansara. It's an eau de parfum. Oof. <sighs> Once winter rolls around, sweetheart, I'm buying this. Oh my goodness. Okay, Leos, we are known for being a bit egotistical, right? We're ruled by the sun. The sun is the center. We're a heliocentric solar system, baby. Sun is the center of everything. So we always think about ourselves. And Leos, I really think we operate, we dress ourselves, we f perfume ourselves, we groom ourselves as if we are someone that we ourselves want to do, okay? And this perfume makes me want to do me. And Leo is a masculine sign, okay, or a fire sign. If you think about lions, they're like very ferocious and they roar and they want to be heard and they, they're hunters and they go after what they want. And so this to me is like telling everybody in the room, look at me, smell me. You know, I'm in the mood for attention as always. It's, and it's on the masculine side. So if you don't like white flowers, this is quite floral. And I, I don't love floral, but I make an excuse because it's just something about that is special. <sighs> this one, baby. <laughs> If I met the person that captured, the, that was this fragrance all the time, that it was their essence, I would be married and pregnant right now. All right, for Virgo, we definitely want something clean. What am I thinking of? I know I have something. Hmm, I have some options, I think. All right, my Virgos, I'm sorry if this is boring to you. You probably already know about this, but this is my opinion, okay? Amazing Grace by Philosophy. Virgos are known for their, uh, they like their spaces to be clean, they like to be clean, they like their partners to be clean. They're very much uh, into hygiene and this is a very soapy fragrance to me, but it's also warm and loving, which is Virgo, so Virgo too. They're helpful and they will do anything for their friends and they're an earth sign so they're grounded. This smells like the class valedictorian, Ugh, but feminine. I think of the goddess Demeter, the goddess of the harvest. I mean, they're, uh, you know, I think of bounty. So this is perfect for someone who likes to come across as always appropriate, never overdressed, but never underdressed. Uh, it's very elegant. This is a very elegant scent, but it can be worn in many different occasions and I'm so sorry. This is just welcome to my life right now. You're gonna smell so clean, so fresh, feminine, but not in a body way, not in a, an obnoxious way, not in, an, in any way that calls more attention to you than you're comfortable with, because Virgos can be quite shy. It's just really classy, really simple, and really lovely. Philosophy, amazing grace. All right, for Libra, what are we gonna do for Libra? We need something just pretty, pretty, pretty. Hmm. Mm, that's a little too strong. Is that a little too green? I don't know. Ah, okay. Not everybody's gonna love this, but you, that's fine. Okay. All right, so I've got two for Libra that I'm thinking of. This is, remember, this is from my collection. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Where is it? Okay, two that I'm thinking of for Libra. The first one for my younger Libras, my girly girls, who like my sweet, so you don't actually have to be younger, but you know, this is a very sweet, girly, young scent. And Libras, they always have that youthful look to them. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose my mind, please. All right, so my first choice for Libra is Sweet Like Candy by Ariana Grande because this is sweet, but it's not like her other fragrances that are syrupy kind of, and this is a lot different. This is warm, okay? This smells like you wanna smell it on fabric, like on, on, on f sweaters and things. This is more spring. This is light and airy. It's sparkly, it's like sort of like champagne. So it really doesn't smell, it's not like um, pink sugar, or aqualina, anything candy like like that. It's really, really sparkly, like it reminds me of like champagne gummy bears or something like that. And this is just super, super girly and feminine and flirty, which is so Libra, uh, but it's not loud, it's not obnoxious, um, but it's like, it reminds me of the sound of like, 
tinkling bells, which also translates to me to like, like gossip and a little bit of like girl talk. And then my Libra Venus is screeching. I need this perfume. I need this perfume. This is C Fiori by uh, Giorgio Armani, which everyone is always talking about currently. Yes, C is good, but this is C Fiori. And it is, uh, it's very sweet, but it smells like a beautiful bride, like a beautiful goddess, feminine woman, just the, it's the epitome of femininity to me. It makes me feel romantic and so feminine. It turns on something in my mind that like makes me feel delicate, but not that I have to change myself. It just, it just helps me tap into my own feminine energy. And it's just, it's so beautiful. I'm not sure of the notes right now, but it's floral, I guess, but very, very sweet, okay? Which I think is why it works for me, doesn't give me a headache. So yeah, those are my picks for Libra. Scorpio, ooh, okay. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Ooh, mm, that's a possibility. I'm setting aside all of these dark, sort of dark fragrances because that's what the vibe, you know, this bottle is very Scorpio to me, but the fragrance, not so much. The fragrance is kind of simple. That was Dolce and Gabbana, Intense Pour Femme. So I need something a little more complex. Okay, Scorpio's giving me dark, dark vibes. The three I have selected are Tom Ford Oud Wood, very dark, very yummy, but I'm not sure. This might be a little loud for Scorpio. It's not subtle. You definitely can smell it on you. And Scorpios don't always, you know, usually they don't want to be attracting so much attention. That's so good though. This Montal La uh, Oud Lavender, this is incredible. This is like if a Scorpio wanted to be a Leo for a day. They were, they were pretending to be a Leo for a day, they would wear this. Because you know what? This is loud. People will smell you. You can overspray this very easily. So this is like, this is like a, I mean, I know that's Kylie Jenner, Leo with a Scorpio moon, or maybe Scorpio with a Leo moon. This, this is definitely a little bit obnoxious just to pick for Scorpio. Otherwise, Rose 31 by Lilabo. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Rose 31 by Lilabo because the rose gives it that romantic, classic vibe. It's really not that loud of a fragrance. You can wear it very subtly if you do like two sprays it's it's androgynous a little bit and it has that lolabo darkness and that depth that um it's like gravitas you know it's moody it's a moody fragrance so it's not it's not your you know joe malone red roses okay this is this is dark and moody and it almost smells like it should be worn on a leather jacket it's very very good but it's not obnoxious uh, but it smells complex, and that's a key. It smells very complex to me. So, just like Scorpios, dark, moody, complex, very sexy. Rose 31 by Lilabo. All right, next we have Sagittarius. All right, now we can talk about some loud fragrances. <laughs> I need something feisty and a little exotic because they love to travel, you know? Huh, I'm not sure I have many Sagittarius fragrances. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna go with this because this bottle also sort of makes me think of Sag. This is Dolce & Gabbana Intense Eau de Parfum. This is, I would categorize this as an Oriental. It's really sweet. Uh, the lasting power is not crazy and the projection is not that much either, but for some reason, it's very sexy. It smells a little bit exotic. Something with oud would be great for Sagittarius too. There's a oh, there is a bond, uh, a bond perfume that is uh, the it's the Dubai collection and ruby. It's the red one. I need it because I love mixing. Oh my god, so good. But that would be great for Sag. Something exotic with oud maybe. Yeah, I mean, but this is great. This I can I feel like a Sagittarius could wear this to for many different occasions. But it's it is quite sexy. It is. Uh, bold without being like weird. It's not gonna put many people off. It's gonna smell good to most people. 
but yeah, it smells a little bit complex, a little bit alluring, a little exotic. It's darker, it's a darker fragrance to me. That's hard to nail Sagittarius from my collection, but the closest I'm gonna go with is, is this Dolce & Gabbana Intense Eau de Parfum. All right, next we've got Capricorn. Ooh, okay, Capricorn. So maybe, uh, this is a hard one. I want something darker. It's so weird with my explanations, but it makes sense to me. Something darker, oh, wait. Hmm. Hermes en Jardin Solenil could work because it's fresh and it, that's definitely something that could be appropriate for work. That smells really good. But it needs a little bit more weight to it. That's a good Capricorn summer fragrance. Like a work from home Capricorn fragrance, but I need something with a little more weight, something a little more robust. Come on, Capricorn, reveal yourself to me. What's up? Burberry. Not that one. That's a Burberry's a very Capricorn line to me, though. Capricorn house. Oh. I don't have many Capricorn fragrances either because I feel like you think of Capricorn, you think of industrious, hardworking, appropriate, uh, disciplined, and I <laughs> am some of those things, but I don't work a nine to five. So I don't have a lot of fragrances that were bought with the workplace or being around people in general. You know, I, don't, I, I didn't keep those in mind when buying fragrances. All right, I'm gonna go with Zara Oriental. And this is, a fragrance that is not expensive, but it smells expensive. But it doesn't smell like you're trying to make a statement of pay attention to me. You're going to smell amazing when people are up by you, but it's not gonna call attention to you. I can still see this being appropriate for the office. Honestly, it depends on your job, but like if, you, if you've got your own office and you're a powerful person in charge, this is great. Cause it's warm and um, it's a flattering fragrance, like it, it melts into the skin in a very natural way, at least on me. But it's not one of those that smells like you are calling out for people to think you're sexy. So it's professional, but it's, it's grounded also. It's earthy, sort of. Uh, it's warm and it smells expensive. It smells powerful. Yeah, Zara Oriental is my choice for Capricorn. All right, we've got Aquarius. What are we gonna choose for Aquarius? I'm thinking this. Definitely something unique, but light. No. <laughs> Although I love you, baby. All right, I'm actually having a hard time choosing for Aquarius because I don't have, I wanna give them something different actually yeah this is what i'm gonna choose so this fragrance is uh by juliet has a gun and this is called sunny side up i only have the tester but it's to me very androgynous it's a very skin scent it's unique it's not something that people are going to immediately be able to grasp the notes of i can't really right now but it's delicious, but yeah, it is very unique. It's not something you're gonna smell on a lot of people. And I think for an Aquarius fragrance, that's gotta be it. But also it's light. It's, uh, it does smell a bit sunny for some reason. It smells fun and optimistic, but also mature. And uh, like, it smells like someone who works at a really cool independent bookstore would wear this. So yeah, my pick for Aquarius is Juliet Has a Gun, Sunny. So yeah, my pick for Aquarius is Sunny Side Up by Juliet Has a Gun. And finally, Pisces. Pisces ideal, oh. Pisces for me ideally would have aquatic elements, but also oud, because they're spiritual, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, but it has to be light. Pisces, what are we gonna choose for you? Okay, for Pisces, I'm gonna choose Oisho, number one, Eau de Parfum. I love this, am I showing it the wrong way? No, there we go. Uh, I love this fragrance. It's clean and light. It is very, 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 very similar to Le Labo Santal 33. 
but uh, much more inexpensive and I think it's lighter, less, uh, less masculine. It could, it's appropriate for like the beach. Like I would never wear Suntel 33. I wouldn't want to spray that on me on a day on the beach. This is more airy and it smells a little bit aquatic, uh, a little more outdoory than Suntel 33. And it's very unique and there's something smoky about it. Uh, so it gives me that sort of spiritual, reflective, hippie vibe of Pisces, but not dirty, not um, like sloppy. It still smells very stiff. It smells very sophisticated and just very, very, very lovely, but, but warm, someone that you'd want to talk to and have a deep conversation with. I keep opening it and smelling it, but it smells fantastic. So yeah, totally. My pick for Pisces, Oisho One Eau de Parfum. Okay, you guys, those were my uh, 2020 Zodiac picks for fragrance from my personal collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your sign and what your pick is for what embodies you as a fragrance. And I will talk to you in my next video. Love you guys. Mwah. Bye, guys.